uh, Nigeria cannot be treated as object of charity or satisfied by emergency aids. <laughs> well, I understand you fa you're making faces, Governor, to me. <laughs> well, thank you, but uh, this is the end. <laughs> It's a growing importance demand. Forgive us, Dr. Kushner, Mr. the moderator set a reminder. <clears throat> Thank you very much because you gave me three other minutes, but I don't want this three other minutes. I want to tell you that this is a great country, Nigeria, and you have a great governor. <laughs> oh, well. And you know what it's called that in democracy, not demagogy. <laughs> okay. So, the progress you have made, Nigerian people, all the rest of the world knows your growth and your success in industry, in agriculture, everywhere. So, now, democracy is another story, but you are not so bad compared to the other. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, another round of applause for Dr. Kushner, please. Um, great people of River State, your governor is not just a leader, he's human. And so you should allow him to express his emotions by holding Madame's hands. Um, just before we move on, I just want to mention that one of the discussants, um, Honorable Dino Milai, I've been arrested nine times this year and 24 times in one year. He's a tough man. Please, a round of applause for the gentleman for being so outspoken. And now we would hand over very quickly to the moderator. Thank you very much, sir, Professor. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have heard from Dr. Fatu Tommy and Dr. Bernard Kushner. We have for this first panel three distinguished gentlemen and a lady to tell us more about the presentations that have been made. And um, to start the discussions, I would like to invite the Honorable Dino Malay to take over. Thank you. All right. The Executive Governor of River State and Wife, the Chairman of this occasion, greatest Nigerian people. I, expect, I expected a response from that. Greatest Nigerian people. Yeah. I'm so delighted to be in River State today. I'm not used to flattering before I make my um, contribution or reaction to the two papers. But this edifice I'm in, I stand in the gap and I tap the performance anointing from Governor Rutimi Amechi to Kogi State. Your Excellency, you have done very well. I don't praise people, but I see you as one of the most fearless, courageous, performing governor south of the Sahara, north of the Limpopo. The topic today is very apt, talking about democracy and good governance. Professor Patu Tomi gave us an highlight, and from his paper, I can deduce three major challenges and solutions to the problem of democracy in this country. And these three points, quickly, is 70% of the challenges comes from corruption, 15% from
from insecurity and another 15% from tribalism or you can call it regional sentiments. Democracy is defined literally as government of the people, by the people, and for the people. But what we are practicing right now under the current administration of good luck Ebele Azikiwe Jonathan is greedocracy. Government of the greedy, by the greedy, and for the greedy. Corruption is the bane of our development as a nation. We are where we are today because of corruption. We have bad roads in Nigeria today and people are dying because of corruption. Our hospitals are mere consulting clinics today because of corruption. Our schools are dilapidated and you have 40 seats in a class for 200 students and one teacher, all because of corruption. Our chemistry laboratories in our secondary school have no regents any longer. Instead of when I was in the secondary school, our biology practical, you dissect a frog and then label. But because of corruption today, something has been introduced called alternative to practicals. You just imagine a frog and you begin to label it. That is corruption. So the reason why we are where we are as a nation and our democracy is struggling is because we have government after government that is celebrating corruption. And I say without fear or favor, I already have my toothbrush and my soap here in case I'm accosted after this meeting. Governor Amechi should just remember to send me beans. I want to say without fear or favor that this particular government have celebrated corruption at any government in this country. And we cannot have proper democracy if we don't tackle corruption headlong. And we have serious examples. I was a member of the National Assembly in 2011 when we passed a budget of 245 billion for subsidy. 245 billion. But this government ended up spending 2.3 trillion, over 2 trillion above the budget in any civilized country of the world, that president would have resigned or the National Assembly would have impeached him. If today you remove two trillion naira from the economy of Ghana, Ghana will collapse. So with this magnitude of corruption, with this intensity of corruption, there can never be proper democracy, there can never be dividends of democracy as supposed. So if you see what is happening, and I say here, and I, 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 I stand to be challenged, that under this particular government, talking about democracy, because the only example we have for democracy is, is, is the government. Under this government that I'm speaking, no one single politically exposed person have been prosecuted or jailed. With this type of attitude towards democracy, there can never be progress, there can never be peace, there can never be stability. What you, can, what you will continue to have is Boko Haram. Democracy cannot thrive, and the greatest challenge to democracy will continue to be corruption, especially when you have a leadership that says corruption is mere stealing. I think that's another thesis, for a PhD thesis for our political science students, to compare common stealing and uh, corruption. Under this present administration, talking about democracy, we have a particular minister who has been indicted as an example of corruption, who has been indicted six times. I mean six good times. The first time was the KPMG report. KPMG is an international audit firm invited by the federal government, paid by the federal government to write a report on the oil industry. That KPMG report indicted the Ministry of Petroleum, indicted the Minister of Petroleum, Honorable. indicted the NNPC. Honorable, we have limited time.
I'm sorry to cut you short.